Gasho. Namo Amida Boots. 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 Hello, and welcome to the 2021 Tri-State Denver Buddhist Temple Nihane Service. We're very glad that you're here to join us in celebrating the life of the historical Buddha, Shakyamuni. We're going to start today's service with Sanbu Jo. Sanbu Jo can be found on page 35 in the Blue Denver Service Book. We'll then have a reading of Our Pledge. You can find a copy of Our Pledge in the description directly below. We will then have a talk in English by Reverend Diana Thompson. Sagoni, Amada Sensei no Nihongo Hoa Des. Thank you very much for joining us today. And please be a light unto yourself. Sambu Jo. Bujo Ni
Please join me in Gusho. Our pledge. Breaking out of my shell, I shall carefully share a warm smile and speak gentle words, just like the kind Buddha. Not becoming lost in my greed, anger, and ignorance, I shall be open-minded and act accordingly, just like the calm and peaceful Buddha. Not putting myself first, I shall share in the joy and sadness of others, just like the compassionate Buddha. Realizing the gift of life we have received, I shall try to live each day to its fullest, like the Buddha who continues to emancipate all. Namo Amidabuts. Namo Amidabuts. Namo Amidabuts. Namandabuts. 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 Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's Nehan-e service. We'll open with Gasho. Namo Amidabuts. Namo Amidabuts. Namo Amidabuts. Namo Amidabuts. Okay, thank you again for joining us. As I mentioned, today we are observing Nehane or Nirvana Day. And this is the observance where we memorialize the historical Buddha, Shakyamuni. This is the date of his death, as it would as is said. And they also refer to it as Parinirvana Day, because this means that because of his death, Shakyamuni Buddha was able to enter into full and perfect enlightenment, having exhausted all of his past karma and never having to come back into the cycle of rebirth. Now, the story goes that nearing the end of his life, the Buddha was aware that he was getting very, very old and especially old for those times. And he had spent all of his life from the time that he left the palace wandering around northern India, teaching people about what he had attained when he became enlightened. Now, he is a very, very old man at this point, and he still has several monks and people who are following him around, but he also knows that it's about time for him to pass out of this world. So they begin taking a very specific journey, and along the way, they stop at the house of a man named Kunda. Now, at this time, monks and nuns were wandering mendicants, and so they did have to rely on the kindness of other people in order to maintain themselves, and especially when they ate something. And when you're a beggar, as we say, beggars can't be choosers. And so when you receive food, either by stopping at someone's house or when somebody brings it to you as you are on the road, you gratefully receive it because this is what's going to nourish not only your body, but your mind. And it was very, very important because even though we always think of these monks and nuns as being people who try to not receive very much and take in very little, the Buddha himself was very firm when he said that it is important that people be fed because in order to have a strong and firm mind, your body too must be there. So his group stops at the house of this man named Kunda and Kunda gratefully receives them and makes them a lovely meal. And it's said that either the meal had little mushrooms in it or it was made of pork. Regardless of what was in there, it made the Buddha ill. So they thanked Kunda and they went on their way. But as they're walking along to the grove where the Buddha is going to pass out of existence, he is becoming sicker and sicker. And 
the sutra itself, the Parinirvana Sutra that tells this story actually does go into more graphic detail than I think is necessary for a sutra story. But I think many of us have had food poisoning and so kind of know what the body goes through at this time. Now, not only was the Buddha dealing with that, but he also was very, very old. So it was more difficult for him. And as they're moving along, the monks and nuns that are with him are getting kind of angry because they're like, oh, this is Kunda's fault. And he's the one who made you sick. And the Buddha is telling them, no, 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 this is something that was bound to happen. And when they finally reach the grove where he is to pass into uh, his final perfect nirvana, he starts announcing that this is where I am going to die. And he lays down, and as he is lying there, preparing to pass out of this world, again, the monks and nuns are surrounding him, and they're lamenting and still wanting to blame Kunda. They're so angry, and they want to go back and, like, you know, either beat him up or at least verbally berate him. And the Buddha is telling them that, no, this is not Kunda's fault. Kunda did a very kind thing for us. He offered us food when we had none. He took us into his home and gave us shelter when we had none. And frankly, the fact that I, the Buddha, existed in the first place certainly means that I am going to die because that is what existence is. So as he lays there and everybody is lamenting and crying, not only are they still kind of grumpy at Kunda, but they also are so, so worried that at the loss of their teacher, they will have no direction. They won't know what to do with themselves, how to properly teach, how to properly practice. And the Buddha, as he is passing out of this world, says simply, be a light unto yourself, telling them that we all have our specific paths. We all have different ways of doing and being. And so the truths that he brought were not specific to him. They were universal truths that pre-existed him and would continue to exist on into the future. So the fact of them was a fact, but the way that you prepared it, practiced it, taught it to others was going to be specific to you. And with that, he passed out of existence between the twin sala trees and people gathered to lament. And that is the story of the Buddha's Parinirvana. Now, one of the things I was thinking about um, as I was sort of revisiting this story was the story of Kunda. And many of you who have been members of my temple and our temple for a while know that I always mention the meal at Kunda's house in terms of what could possibly have been eaten. Again, certain stories say it was bad pork. Certain stories say it was bad mushroom. And I always say that because it was, I was probably mushrooms because I personally don't like them. So I always picture how I feel when I eat a mushroom and it kind of grosses me out anyway. But the thought of one totally poisoning, poisoning you makes sense to me. And this also made me think of um, recently I realized that I have an allergy to parsley. Now this came up out of absolutely nowhere. I've had no problems with this in the entire 40 years of my life, but recently we had two incidences in about the span of a week, one where we ordered Mediterranean food and one where we had ordered Italian food. Now, in both instances, my tongue started getting really itchy while I was eating this, and my tummy started getting a little queasy too, and I couldn't figure out for the life of me what had gone on. Well, the Mediterranean restaurant, we'd never eaten at before, so I thought maybe they're using an ingredient that I'm unfamiliar with, but the Italian place, we'd eaten at a thousand times, and I was eating a dish that I'd had a thousand times, but I got the same reaction. My tongue's itchy and kind of feeling almost like it's swelling up. My tummy's feeling a little weird, and sort of through process of elimination, we realized that it might be the parsley. 
which was interesting because just a few months before that, we had discovered that my daughter, too, has an allergy to parsley, something that we had never, ever noticed, but same kind of instance where she actually got kind of hives and got really itchy. And when we asked, like, where she had eaten with her grandfather. They had ordered food and they had gotten together and it was definitely the parsley. And then a little while after that, um, it was her birthday. And um, one of her grandfathers very, very kindly offered to make a dinner for her to bring for her birthday. And she had asked for a very specific dish, and this grandfather loves to cook, and he was so, so, so excited. And so he makes this beautiful dish for her that is covered in parsley. Now, of course, she gratefully received it from him because it was such a kind gesture, but she also kind of Not only did I have her take a little Benadryl ahead of time, but she kind of was trying to secretly brush the parsley away because she didn't want to hurt her grandfather's feelings. And it made me at this point kind of remember the story of Kunda, that such a kind gesture, something that a grandfather wants to do for his granddaughter to celebrate her 16th birthday because it's a big deal. And so he goes through all of this to make her this wonderful meal that she gratefully received and gratefully ate because it was such a kind gesture. But my mother, on the other hand, as she was handing the dish was like, oh no, she can't eat parsley. Now this is exactly the situation we were trying to avoid because we did not want to make her grandfather feel bad, but he did. He said, oh my gosh, nobody told me that she has this allergy and I feel so bad and I don't, he didn't want to cause her a reaction. And we kind of told him that we had prepared for that eventuality and that everything was fine. But In thinking of this, it made me think, too, of all of the things that we, who are not monastics, receive in our daily lives. We are able to sort of pick and choose what we eat. We are able to pick and choose the things that we buy, whether it be clothing or cars or any other thing. And so sometimes we forget that it is okay to gratefully receive. We get to a point sometimes where we're kind of selfish because we realize or we don't realize how lucky we are to have the things we have and the opportunities to be able to procure the things we have, especially these days where with the click of a button on our phones, the things, the specific things that we want arrive at our doorstep exactly as we want them. However, at this time of year, it being Nirvana Day and thinking back on the kindness and compassion of the Buddha, even as he was preparing to die, he was trying to impart lessons to his followers. And one of those was that when we receive something, we should gratefully receive it. We should be very happy for the things we have. And yes, sometimes... If and when we get to go back to restaurants, we have been and have the potential to be those people who will send something back because it was not perfect to our specifications. But when we do this, I think we should also remember all of the hard work that brought that dish to us and consider the surroundings. Was the restaurant particularly busy that day? Maybe your waitress wasn't having a really good day and she forgot that one minor detail. So rather than getting on to Yelp and giving restaurants bad reviews based on one tiny mistake that they made or accusing them of trying to murder you somehow, just remember that not everyone is perfect and that sometimes it's better to appreciate the work. If you receive a food that maybe you're allergic to at a restaurant, yes, certainly you can send it back, but do it in a kind way. Because 
They don't know all of your allergies. They are doing the best that they can, and they are kindly offering you because that It may be their job, but they also want to do it as well as they can. So in thinking on Nirvana Day and all of the lessons that the Buddha taught us, maybe this time around, think about all of the things that we do have and all of the things that we receive from other people. It might not be exactly the way we wanted it. It might not even necessarily be things that we like. Believe me, I've eaten a lot of mushrooms so as not to offend a host. And sometimes we just remember to accept these things gratefully, to accept that the person giving them to us is doing this out of kindness because they want to offer us something and that the important thing is to be grateful for the help we receive, grateful for the things that we do receive, and grateful to the Buddha for continuing after all of these years, even after he has passed away, to bring the Dharma to us. So thank you all for coming today. Have a very happy Nirvana Day. Stay warm out there. Make sure your pipes are heated. And we'll go ahead and close with Gasho. Namo Amida Boots. Namo Amida Boots. Namo Amida Boots.在所孤独の体となる氷と水のごとく似て氷大きに水大し触り大きに徳大しナモアミダブツナモアミダブツナモアミダブツナモアミダブツアンマンダブツ本日も電波仏教会へようこそのお参りでございます。2月も寒い日が続いています。どうか皆様暖かくしてお過ごしください。本日は涅槃へのお勤めです。涅槃へというのはお釈迦様が入滅された日をご縁として務められる法要のことです。お釈迦様は二十九歳で出家され、三十五歳で悟りを開かれ、以来四十五年間教えを説かれ、八十歳で滅度に入られました。これをネハンに入るとも言います。ネハンとはインドの古い言葉ニルバーナの発音を漢字
罪深さを氷に、そして苦毒を水に例えておられます。氷が多ければ溶けた時の水の量が多いように、在所の氷が多ければ苦毒の水が多いと言います。親鸞商人は比叡山にて厳しい修行をされ、自らの氷の多さを人一倍実感されたからこそ、その氷が溶けた時の水もまた多くなるのだと実感されました。そして周祖は、こちら側からの助けてくださいという声と、阿弥陀仏側からの必ず救うという声があることに気づかれました。阿弥陀仏は、煩悩にまみれながら、この世を生きている私を見て、必ず救うとご本願を起こして、名も阿弥陀仏となって、今ここに届いてくださっています。親鸞商人がお示しくださった、名も阿弥陀仏の働き一つで、誰もがみんなそのまま救われるという教えを聞き、感謝のお念仏とともに日々を送らせていただきたいと思います。本日は尊いご縁をいただき、誠にありがとうございます。寛容は拝読の古文章にて。承認一流の。ご関係の趣は新人のもって本とせられそうろう。そのゆえはもろもろの造業を投げ捨てて一心に未だに奇妙すれば。不可思議の眼力として、仏の偏り、往生は事情、せしめたも。そのくらいを一年ぽっき入賞状、始終とも、釈し。その上の正明念仏た如来我が王女を定めたまいし。ご恩法人の念仏と心べきなり。あなかしこ。あなかしこ。なもあみだぶつ。なもあみだぶつ。なもあみだぶつ。なんまんだぶつ。なまんだぶつ。